all being well, everybody will be able to hear us, but they won't be able to see us because dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> I mean, I don't see it yet, so I'm just going to accept that it's happening. Oh, that was far, far too much enjoyment for that. And good yeah, evening, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How is everyone? Um, I see that we have people there, but my chat isn't loaded yet, so that's good. Um, Jan will also sound like a robot, so I've just sorted that out as well. You have also ruined my reveal, because I haven't told them what the course was called yet. You put the image up. <laughs> We've planned this perfectly. I had a good idea. <laughs> so let's make sure that people can hear. Uh, we dropped from 12 people watching to four, and I think I'm one of those. So I don't know if everyone just lost connection. Like they saw the image and went, that's it. I'm done. Bye. Yep. <laughs> now, I'm sure that I'd never trust what a YouTube says, because when I have a look at the stats later on, it doesn't reflect anything. Hello, oh, Mindstammer. Yeah. Good to see you. Now, a um, couple of warnings. One... I'm a little bit hyper, and two, Mikey has a beer. I do have a it beer. It appears to be caffeinated beer, because he's gone crazy. <laughs> and hello, Ka uh, Carlos. Yes. So before we get started, let's, let, I mean, this is technically uh, Toucan Chat Canopy Talk. Um, Mikey, how, how are you? I'm, I'm incredibly well. Earlier on today, I was playing around in Blender. You wouldn't have guessed that, I know. Um, so I was playing around in Blender. And one of the things that we often do, especially for the 2D games, is we go to low spec and download one of their palettes. And I I, I went through my notebooks a few uh, a few hours ago, and I looked at something. What, what does palette script mean? I mean, I'm not carrying things on wooden palettes everywhere. And then it twigged as I was asking around about it that I meant color palettes. So I've actually written a script now that will take a color palette downloaded from low spec and will automatically not only import it into blender but set all of the material to the right color straight away without doing well with clicking one thing which is run the script now i'm actually going to go over that in a couple of weeks time when we do a live stream and i'll break down the creation of that script so we'll be doing a little focus on python in a couple of weeks time but yeah very nice um, there is a plugin for that in Godot 3 that does exactly that, takes the thing from low spec and, and puts it into your game. It's not currently there for Godot 4. I'm hoping that the author puts it into Godot 4 because it's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's an awesome one. Speaking of Godot 4, Godot 4 is in beta now. It is. Um, it is not yet production ready. How I many times did you crash three it? Three times while chatting with Mikey on Discord for an hour this morning. Um, not huge crashes, like I didn't lose data, but crash the desktop when I'm trying to change some random thing. Yes. Um, hello, Gerard. How but are you doing? We can now announce what our brand new Godot course is going to be. Now, I want to make it clear, I'm not talking about the Godot Action RPG. No. We are also working on that, and when... Oh, I may want to move my mic closer. We are also... <laughs> we are also working. You sound on that. so much better when the mic is <laughs> up close and personal. Hello. Uh, we are also working on the God of Four action RPG. Um, and when God of Four is in a stable enough state for us to start recording, um, I will be splitting my time between finishing off the God of Three Point Five stuff, God of Action RPG, and God of For Everyone. Yeah. What's God of For Everyone? <gasps> That's the new course, Mikey. Show the image. Ba -ba. That sound effect, I'm going to record a few of those so everybody can reveal their game with that. I mean, it's, it's as ba -ba. good as the sound effect we've got in uh, in one of the games you're about to show. Um, so, Godot for Everyone is our upcoming modular, I believe, Godot course. It is the spiritual successor to Discovering Godot, but we're not just remaking Discovering Godot for Godot 4. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Mm -hmm. The big reason is... So much has changed. It's not really a simple um, go in and, and change a few lines of code and redo it. Like there's whole new concepts. There's uh, things in GD script that just don't work the same way. There's, it's so much has changed that we really want to make a, a fresh course for this. Good however, evening, Squarepeg. Hello, Squarepeg. Um, however, we are working on the same kind of philosophy. So we'll start with some very simple 2D games. We're not going to start with a text game this time, um, mostly because I couldn't, I didn't want to repeat the games we had before. Um, 
And I couldn't think of another kind of just normal text game that was fun to make and play. Mm -hmm. So Looney Lips was kind of fun to just sit around and play. It's it's a toy, but we wanted to make some fun games. So Michael is going to be my Vana White. He's going to be my, my Debbie McGee. He is going to showcase some of these games. And the first game that we're going to do in the course is Space Invadux. Now, the first few games are going to be very classic arcade style games for a reason. Yep. Um, so, Mikey, I'm, uh, will it be in Udemy, says Giant Frog? I don't know yet. Maybe. Udemy is great for finding students. It's not great for other things. I don't really want to go into a whole breakdown of their, their structure. Yes, uh, it will all depend on a, a couple of things. One of them is what their terms are at the time. Um, and also mm -hmm. the way that we um, have been launching courses at the moment will also depend on whether or not it's suitable for the Udemy platform or not. That is yep. also critical. Um, and I want to welcome Giant Frog, um, who I will call King Ribbit for the next couple of minutes. Nice. Um, now, I'm going to be a few seconds behind Mikey, so I'm not going to know when he's put that up unless he shares his screen with me here too, which sounds silly. So Space Invadux is going to be the first course. It's going to teach very basic controls, concepts, uh, you know, how does Godot work? What is a scene? What is instancing? What is extending? What is a signal? Yep. We're also going to look at basic programming concepts. What's a function? What's a variable? What's an array? And we're going to use that to make a Space Invader clone. Mikey, do you have it ready? I almost have it ready. I'm just trying to work out how to share my screen, because I think it'd be better if you can see it real time. I think it's this button, and hopefully this doesn't kill the stream in any way. Hopefully you can now see what I can see, which is the Godo. I can see what you can see. Um, Mad Zinkra says, well, they prefer you to me simply because most of the online classes they own are there. Uh, they completely understand. I'm yeah. very glad to hear it. Um, Udemy has a lot of strong benefits. And for us, one of the big ones is, is discoverability. But they change their, their uh, terms and conditions quite often. And it, we'll have to see. Yeah, like, We haven't made a decision on that yet. It's not impossible. Well, let me put that in a clearer way. It's possible that we won't go through Udemy, mm -hmm. but we haven't reached a decision. Uh, Mikey, press play. Up, up, up. Uh, I need to share it first. Which is Will this you have parts here? that you discuss the difference between Godo 3 and 4? Oh, that's a really good idea, Isaac. Um, I don't think those are going to be central to the course, but what I might do is do videos between each module yep. to explain how this is different from how you would do it in Godo 3. Because if you're coming to Godo fresh, yeah, then but... you probably don't want to, to hear about the old engine. It's confusing. Yeah, it's a very good point. Um, or, or maybe just um, part of the Godot tips rather than baked into the course. There's various ways we can approach that um, as an upgrade. Now, I will point out, everything something. you're about to see is hot code. It is very early. It's basically proof of concept. Yeah. These are the kinds of things we're going to teach. Lots may change. And none of them have working options menus yet. So Mikey's going to be in charge of volume control. Awesome. Hopefully it's not too loud. Um, right. Um, the other thing is, good evening, Medicon. Okay, let's change it over to my screen. And I, I believe that the sound coming out of the desktop will be muted anyway. Um, I also want to point out that we are working with a whole cast of mascots. The idea being you can use them in multiple games. Uh, this one will star Legit Penguin and Space Duck, who were made by my girlfriend and her daughter. So thank you for that. Now I'm going to turn up the audio for a little bit. Oh, oh! you can shoot the projectiles coming down. Yeah, they don't currently count the score. <laughs> oh, and I'm dead. Oh, he died. Okay, so things we've got going in here. Um, the game is this is changing the speed depending on how many ducks are left. Uh, destructible terrain, all the rest of it. Uh, more than one bullet at once. Inauthentic. You are right. There's a few inauthentic touches here. We don't have to have three bullets at once. I put that in to show how that works. Um, oh, interesting the... factoid about the original Space Invaders, which is obviously the inspiration for this. Why did the uh, flying saucers speed up, Yan? Well, the flying saucers didn't, but the, the aliens. Oh, the aliens, um, yes. Okay, as you know, one of the, the key gameplay mechanics of Space Invaders, I'm saying as you know, 
I'm almost certain everyone watching has played this, but just in case you haven't, there's a whole bunch of space aliens, in this case, space ducks. And as you get rid of them, they go faster and faster and faster. This wasn't a game design choice. No one sat down and said, this will be fun. As there were less sprites on screen, the computer ran faster. And then when the technology got better, they just, they just thought, leave it in. It's great. But, uh... Hello, Deirdrick. Uh, so, yeah, our first game is going to be a nice little Space Invaders clone. There's nothing hugely fancy about it, but it's it's a quick little win, fun little soundtrack. All the graphics are made by us and our loved ones, um, which I'm quite happy with. Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's a fun little way to spend time. There's a couple of bugs I want to fix in that. Uh, specifically, I can't have more than two rows of, of space ducks um, because of the way I've chosen to decide when they have to turn. Yep. Um, slight echo, slight echo. Slight, slight echo, echo was fixed. Thank you. Um, so yeah, from there, we're going to go to a slightly slower one that's going to teach some, some interesting concepts. Uh, we're going to go to Pie Sweeper. Now, currently, I don't have a pie graphic in this. I'm sorry. We don't, but we'll go from <laughs> Space Invadux to Pie Sweeper. Uh, we do have a toucan instead of a pie. There's no sound in this one. There yet. is no sound. That's absolutely fine. And for those... Oh, need to hide that. That wasn't there when I played it earlier. Da -da! Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, on your... That works. Yep. <laughs> so, you might remember this game. Yes, I got this one. Um, so you can simply select the ones where you think the pies are and then carry on working through. So the, for those who don't know, the square with a number in it will tell you, or all the squares surrounding it, how many pies there are. So this one, we know there's one in all of here and there's two here. So we can go ahead and flag that. And because this one has these two within it, we know there's nothing there and we can continue around like that. And oh, I... <laughs> nice! <laughs> Found a pie. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is kind of more of a, a time wasting and kind of a nostalgic game. It's not really a classic um, arcade game, although it's a mm. classic Windows PC game. I remember um, when you were working on this, there's quite a bit of logic involved in making sure the right things are shown and that when you're clicking on it, like the whole island appears if there's, there's a some blank. interesting things you have to learn one of them is um well first we're using tile maps so we have to introduce the whole concept of tile map how to paint with tiles and we'll play a little bit with that but then we need to generate the board and when we generate the board we have to know not just where each pie is but how many pies are in each num uh, surrounding square because when you press the button we need the right number to come up and if there is none, we need to keep expanding until we hit a number. So there's a couple of interesting programming challenges that I think will challenge people when they're first starting, but it's a great way to get into the mindset of how do you turn mm. uh, a problem into a logical piece of code? You know, something that we could describe in a couple of lines of, of text or a couple of seconds of speaking. Um, each square will have a number that shows how many pies are in each yeah. surrounding square and of how course do you do that in code um with with coding one of the one of the ways of looking at any type of coding is it's about problem solving and so actually having a decent problem to solve rather than a, a made up problem if you know what i mean by that sometimes problems are forced whereas this is a genuine problem how do we work this out gets your mm -hmm. gets your brain thinking um, and thinking uh, logically. Mad Tinkerer says, does Pie Sweeper use the new tile map? It does. It does indeed. Um, and there's a couple of other interesting challenges. Like we have to teach people how to let the Godot know, I have clicked on this tile, which isn't difficult once you know about tile maps, but it's not instantly uh, obvious to, to someone yeah. learning coding. So yeah, there's some fun things there. And from there, we'll go into another classic. Um, we are going to go into what was going to be called Tukey Bricks, but then I, I got creative with the word bat. Now, I have shown this one before, but Mikey, take us through a quick game of Spooky Bricks. Okay, let's switch over and press play. Now, I think the extra spooky mode works. I'm not sure, but 
Oh, it's mouse controlled. I forgot. Controlled. I forgot that. Come on. What happened? <laughs> oh, it's just going slow on my side. Okay. <laughs> our our conference software does no, not, not like this not much movement. Not small ball. <laughs> Big bad. <laughs> So again, we are using tile maps. So now we have to figure out when a rigid body is hitting a tile and what to do about it. We've got various power-ups. We've got this lovely little trail that I added today just to make it more interesting for photographs. It's a surprising amount of little challenges that you don't think about when you're first making this game, which is a, a great way to get into a mouse control scrolling game. Now, we don't want to make everything retro, right? So we want some new style games. But this is surprisingly compelling to make. Only one level on all of these so far. Uh, we will talk about how to change levels and how to make things more difficult. Um, but yeah, we, we're literally just painting this level as a tile map. The gray square bricky things up there are, um, what do you call it? Um, you have to hit them twice. Yeah. Uh, the ball is Bob the Skull, whom you may recognize. The bat's name is Boris. Uh, we will be having the return of Tuki, obviously and Panda Friend from um, Tukey Bubble. And we will be having the return of Avery and Any Bunny. That's right, that's what I'm calling them. And maybe a couple <laughs> of others, you know, we'll let you guys design some. Uh, so yeah. Sorry, do, do I have to stop playing? Because this is actually no, you, surprisingly I'm enjoying watching the bouncies. <laughs> the tail works reasonably well, because yeah. it's just a line 2D. Anyway. I'm going to pause that so we they can see our lovely faces again. Hello, I'm back. Yeah, I, so so one of the great things about the games that we've chosen, because we went through quite a few different variations, yep. and yes, these are all very basic games, but we also want anybody, especially if you're new, to be able to pick it up and get going straight away. The more complex or the more pretty you make your game, often is the case that it ends up taking a lot longer to get to the end result so initially we just want people to have those quick wins and to be able to create and build upon the the learnings that they've had before so we're dealing Absolutely. with tile brick uh, tile bricks tile maps and laying them out um for the uh sweeper and then mm -hmm. we've got uh tile maps but this time you're painting it so you get to design your own levels using tile map and of course with, with tile maps, that's how a lot of uh, platformers are put together as well. Yep. Um, and we're going to want at least one more 2D game that I haven't designed yet, uh, mostly to deal with things like how to make things really pretty in Godot and 2D. It might be a platformer, it might be an infinite run, I've not decided. Um, the first three games are very retro. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that's a good decision. Um, I think the games are fun to play. Uh, yeah, as Mad Tinker says, um, it's always good to yeah. start simple. You can add complexity. That's kind of what we want. We want you yeah. guys to be so proud of these. It's why we always want to make games as our projects rather than toys. Because we thought about things like a pub name generator or a dice roller, which is a good programming challenge. But once you have it, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. right? It's not really something you're going to enjoy sharing to your, with your friends. Well, you might enjoy sharing with your friends. They're not going to enjoy playing it. Because ultimately, like, oh, it's good. not, I made not the a game, pig. <laughs> hey. Right. Um, but something that you can make your own so that you can expand. Um, I think that works quite well. There's also the advantage of us making our own sprites for these things um, and consistent characters, meaning that we can actually work on, here's a complete set of movements for Space Stuck, if you want to use them in a platform game. Here's one for Legit Penguin, um, who is returning to us from Mag Racer. When we have the Legit Penguin uh, thing in the tunnel. Love it. Uh, there's Bob the Skull, who's just recurring characters, just to give it a bit more. <sighs> it's bringing everything together as well. Right. Definitely. Um, now, the other one I've been working on, I'm only started working on this today. Mikey doesn't have access to, so I'm going to have to share my screen. And so, let me... so when you see the frame rate drop, that's Oops. because we're sharing screen. I just closed YouTube. I'm hoping there's no comments. Uh, let me open this. And then put it in the right place and then share my screen with Michael. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen as well just uh, for bandwidth. Here we go. All right. Uh, uh, so that's out of the way. And... Share my screen. <laughs> All right, let's switch over. Yes. Okay. I did say we're not using any of the old games. This isn't a new game. This is Toucan Kickabout. Um, and it actually has a rather lovely 
I had a rather lovely moment while doing it. This is just, let's make a fun local multiplayer 3D game. We're going to introduce 3D, we're going to introduce world environments and other fun things. Uh, this is just a simple moving spotlight in a black environment. There's no goal yet. Um, the characters aren't animated yet. But kinematic bodies can now interact properly with rigid bodies. That might not sound like a big deal. But beforehand, in Godot 3, if a kinematic body hits a rigid body, they don't move. That predictability is built in, right? You're not, you don't want things to move on a kinematic body unless you, you tell it to move. But they had a workaround, something called infinite inertia. If you switch on infinite inertia, you could walk um, your character into a table and the table would fly across the room at top speed because it had infinite inertia. They removed infinite inertia from God of War. I didn't know that until just before this. I was like, I want to show that we're going to do some 3D content. Let's just show the beginnings of the next game so they can get the feel of what it's going to be like. Um, I do want to have more than two characters. I do want them animated, maybe made in Blender um, and animated there. I don't know. Maybe we'll animate them ourselves. Um, Bible, the collision wall <laughs> is way too small. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'll bring okay. us back. There we go. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So yeah, there's, sharing it? as we say, we're we're right at the very early concepting stage of putting things together. We've we've got the earliest early syllabus pretty much thought out. Oh wait, no, I didn't want end. to stop sharing my screen. I'm an idiot. What did you want to do? I wanted to show what's here instead of um, infinite inertia. Let me try that again. Okay. okay cool. Yes. Sure. I will okay. put you back on. This is really cool. I am so happy. I did not know God of War was doing this. One-way collision mask. Yeah. What is what a one-way collision mask? I hear you say to yourself, which is a weird thing to say to yourself, but that's fine. Okay. I have put Tuki and Tuki 2. I haven't named Tuki 2 yet. Um, probably make it a different character. We might have all of the characters. I don't know. Um, are on a collision layer. They are on collision layer 2. I haven't named the collision layers yet. And they can interact with 1, which is the scenery, and 2. But the ball is on collision layer doo, 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 three. The player is not interacting with three, but the ball is interacting with the player. So the player isn't stopping because the player hasn't hit anything that makes it want to stop. The ball registers a hit, and so it moves. Nice. That is such a lovely solution. I am so happy they put that in. I can't even. Like my ability to even is completely broken. I, I, I can barely even odd. Okay, now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and reopen uh, thingy. Wait, where's my mouse? There it is. <laughs> Hopefully in your hand. Let me bring us back. There we go. So yes, that is coming along absolutely brilliantly. And I really like the, the beginning journey that we've got so far. It being able to take, and it will be for total beginners. I think that's important to say. So if you've if you've taken Discovering Godot, it'd be more like a journey of discovering what's new yep. in, in Godot 4 and taking it from the basics again. And if you're- And what we've learned yep. from a few years of, of being Canopy Games and having our own style and stuff. We have some yep. questions. Mikey, would you Ooh. like to read the questions? And I'll pretend they're from you. I mean, I, not from you. I, from students, I don't so. see any questions. Okay. <clears throat> Square peg. Got a question. Do you plan on covering the new multiplayer system in this or in a future course? Uh, <laughs> maybe in a future course. Um, I like working with multiplayer. Mm -hmm. It's really tricky. Like, it's tricky to work with. It's really easy to get confused. But breaking it down into teachable concepts in an online series of videos is tricky. So I'm not going to promise that. I do want to do it. I don't think it'll be part of this course because that's really intermediate into advanced rather than beginner to intermediate. Yeah. But maybe. Like, we'll, we'll that, see. I'll have to play with it. So the game you just saw, uh, Two Can Kick About, then that is local multiplayer. So there will be yes. some elements of multiplayer in the Godot for Everyone but course. But not using the new net system and, no. and so on. Um Mad Tinker says, interesting, which is not a question, but I think it's interesting too, so I thought I'd say that. <laughs> Mikey, are you still sharing your screen with me? I n am not, no. Then why do I see it? Do you see yourself and me? And... Um, Juros89, oops, I forgot this started 20 minutes ago. Hi. Hi. 
welcome. There it goes. It's gone now. Okay. You have to push that button twice. So, yeah. Uh, at the moment, this is... We've been talking about this course for a while. We've had the name for about a year now. Um, yeah. Several people have told us this name is cheesy. We know. They are right, and I don't <laughs> care. Um, the font we've picked for the image. Mikey, do you want to share the image? Hello, Vertex Rage, because um, we've had some new people coming in. Um, the font we have for the image is very cartoony and playful. Kind of what I'm going for. I want this to be cartoony and playful. There we go. Image um, up. I'm kind of taking a leaf out of language textbooks where they're teaching complex concepts, and so they have recurring characters, and that's what I want to do with our cast. Um, suggestion, please add on Discord when starting. Ooh, ooh that's a good one. Sounds good. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. I'm not going to do it right now because that's mean. That's <laughs> just wasting time to annoy everybody um that's a very good point vertex we will show the games that we've been talking about before yeah we'll go um, back over uh, some of those real so quick what for everybody. don't we have decided yet uh we don't have the price point decided yet although i think we're going to follow the same kind of pattern this is just me talking out of my head um the same kind of pattern as we did with the blender creative suite yeah. if you buy the full suite um you'll get it at a discount no matter when you buy it as we add more content we'll raise the price yeah. Um, how long will it be? Don't know. As as uh, long as it needs to be to cut, uh, basically teach all the concepts um, that we want to teach within a beginners to intermediate course. We want to get you exactly. to a point where you can start um, watching other tutorials, already knowing those fundamentals, so you can follow along without also struggling with with those basics. Yeah. Churros 89, yes, this is the new beginner to intermediate course, it's, uh, the, the spiritual successor of Discovering Godot. Um, we talked a little bit about why we're not just updating Discovering Godot as is, um, mm -hmm. and it's primarily because so much is different that it feels like this is a good time just to... It's not really an update, is it? It's got whole new no. projects, we're covering brand new things, so it's, mm -hmm. it can't really be an in-place upgrade it, with that respect. Um, yeah. Yes. Thank Roderick, you. Uh, I did not forget it's Monday. I never forget. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, Deirdrick, I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it. I'm sorry. Um, the ARPG course will be separate, right? That's more intermediate to advance. Correct. Yes, that is a completely separate project that will be made simultaneously. So look forward to my having to figure out how to manage my stress levels as I jump from one mindset to another and back repeatedly. <laughs> It's um, fine. I used to teach English online to kids in China. I have to say online. Okay, I'm going to go back a bit. I used to live in the States. I was an adjunct professor in New Jersey in a couple of colleges. And while I was doing that, I got a job teaching English to kids in China. And one of my students said, oh, do you do that online? Like, no, I commute. <laughs> uh, China recently changed its laws last year so that um, I can't do that anymore. You you can't have foreign nationals who don't live in China teaching uh, English to students at the moment. So I don't do that anymore. But I loved this job and I loved those kids and they were fantastic and they made me laugh and they made them laugh. But it was so difficult to jump from being cartoon character Mr. Yan to being, I'm going to teach you how to do coding, that it would take me like two or three hours just to get my mind right. Because I'd go from, oh, <gasps> You will eat me. I am not teacher ice cream to hello, you wonderful Godo people. In this video, we're going to not eat ice cream because what's happening with my brain? It it, it was so weird. Jumping from eight to ten year olds to all ages. Yeah. So I'm kind of glad I don't have to do that anymore, but I'm going to have to do it a little bit with this project. Um, you guys are cheesy. It's a good thing it isn't like toast and tolerant. Yes. I mean, this is fair. Uh, we we'll kind true. of embrace it. It's, 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 I feel it's like our character, isn't it? Uh, our character yeah, is so, bubbly, engaging, a um, little bit cheesy. Um, it's I've our got... pedagogy as well. It's yeah. um, one of the things that really helps when you're teaching is developing an authentic style. And both Mikey and I, are very cheesy people. We tell terrible dad jokes. We constantly make each other cringe. Um, it's part of the fun. Yeah, and we have fun doing it. Like we we enjoy stupid puns. We we sing songs. Um, it, it's with new lyrics. Um, my poor girlfriend's eight year old daughter. She's nearly nine. 
every time she hears me do things like Halloween carols, she's just like, I'm going to go now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. It's fine. Ha <laughs> ha. Will this be available on Udemy? We did answer this. We don't currently know. I I will say at the moment, with our current approach to how this is going to be constructed, the answer is probably no. Right. Um, it's not a definite. Udemy does have a lot of advantages, both to the students and to us. But it also has some peculiarities that can be a little difficult to work around. Um, I'm not bad-mouthing Udemy in any way. I think it has a lot of value. But from an instructor point of view, it can be quite challenging. Yes. Uh, the data packets still have to commute, though. Yes, the data packets. Still I like have to that. Um, so, a, qu a quick rundown of the games for people who had missed it earlier. Do you want to give us a demo of each of them again? I we'll be will starting indeed. with Space Invadux. In Space Invadux, yes. No, nope. Mikey can't say Space Invadux for some reason. <laughs> this is our uh, first planned game for God of For Everyone. Yes, Invadux. Let's switch out. Uh, yeah, well, okay. So Udemy is great at making stuff affordable. We do want to make sure that we're not overcharging for our courses. Uh, we do want to make sure that I mean, one thing we want to do is run coupons more often. Yeah. Because running one for my birthday proved very popular. Um, so sales. Um, we, we, we Udemy gives us very little control over pricing. This and is I, very true. I don't mean by that we want to charge $80 for a small course and Udemy won't let us. Um, we have no say over when sales happen. We have no say of, of what kind of price point we should be at. I mean, we have some say as to which tier we want to be at, and it's changing all the time. Um, but it means if we want to run a certain event, we need to make sure certain things are happening. and it, yeah. it's, it's a whole thing. So it might happen. Possibly not. Probably not. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to see when we're closer to releasing. Anyway, Mikey, Space Invadux. Let me go back to pressing main screen. There we go. So Space Invadux. Where I made both sound effects, and I'm very proud of the quack. So, Starring Space, Space Duck, Duck and, and Legion Penguin. Was there ever a time when you had no sale? Uh, yes. I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my memory, anyway. Oh, I'm going to win this time. Definitely going to win. Definitely uh, getting a bit low now. Ah! Nope. <laughs> Didn't win. Um, always go for the edge. All, All right, so that's Space Invaders. Uh, it's going to be the intro course, we believe, unless something changes. Um, it's looking at things like rigid body, well, areas, uh, character bodies, spawning projectiles, how Godo structures its nodes and everything else, um, what a signal is, what a group call is, the, the fundamentals. And from there, we are going to go into Pi Sweeper. Om nom nom. So let's press play here. Um, the two row thing in, in Space and Vedux can be adjusted. I've currently got a bug where if nice, that went well. If any duck hits the edge, they all turn. But if both of them hit the edge at the same time, they turn twice. So I need to fix that bug first. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Can't be one there. Hey, nice one. So yeah, this is a Minesweeper inspired game. Um, I don't know if clone is the right word. Uh, we will be replacing the picture of Tuki with a pie when I've drawn one or someone has drawn one for me. Um, but yeah, little cartoony fonts, very simple. No sounds in this currently. Uh, this is a solo little desk game. If you don't recognize this, you clearly didn't grow up with various versions of Windows. Is it still included in Windows? Uh, no, nothing's included. No. I mean, I, I'm not using Windows currently, so. No, You're free it's to not. play again, Mikey. Um, so this is teaching some, some very, ooh, nice one, some very different concepts here. Um, <laughs> specifically, being able to tell what's in a neighboring grid is, is quite a challenge. Opening up the whole grid when there's no number there, that took us a little while to figure out. 
Um, so yeah, this is Pie Sweeper. And ah. my key messes up like so. Yeah, we will go into dum 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 dum. Let's uh, click the project list. It'll take a few seconds to spooky load. Spooky bricks. I want to know if the spooky button works. Let's press play and see. I can't it hear it. Really work. No. Um, yeah, I have to rewire all the signals. Whoosh. Oh, that was straight. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could do that, but now I do. Neither did I. So this is starring Bob the Skull and Boris the Bat. And here we're going to be looking at some particle effects. And I like the puns. And how to detect when a rigid body hits a tile map and what to do about it. And uh, mouse control and all kinds of other things. No, no, not tiny. I didn't know what that symbol meant. I've got a tiny bat. If it's if it's a black power up, don't get it. Now you tell me. You probably yeah. told me before, but it would have been like back in February. Ah, oh, I, I... ah. Oh, good, it's timed. I've gone big again. No, you picked up something else. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, the bolt, <laughs> the skulls flew off the edge of the bat. Nice, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> oh, this this might take a while. Oh no, it's bounced off. Come on, multi ball now. Oh, hi, Duggan. This is definitely. Welcome to the Godo for Everyone stream. Oh, look, we're combining what we learned in the last one by adding projectiles. Yep. Now, this is timed, isn't it? Or is it just until the next, next one's picked up? Would you please start from scratch? Um, we will cover what we talked about. I don't think we'll start from scratch because if we do that, <laughs> I'll never have dinner. It's called um, Times 2. Playback. Go! Yeah. Now, currently, this is just one level. Um, <gasps> Almost lost, then. As I said at the beginning, these are proof of concepts <laughs> rather than full games. But the idea is to make this into a thing, show you how to add a second level, um, and maybe at the stage teach you about progression and so on. Uh, we also have the beginning... <laughs> uh, we also have the beginning of the first 3D game, uh, which we did show off. I'll, I'll show real quick again. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Let me know when you've shared your screen and I'll put you live. Uh, uh, I've just thought I've got a really important announcement, but I'm going to I'm going to share it after Jan has shared the Is it you've ordered me a curry? I had a curry uh, for dinner. Well, I had curry uh, sauce over some chicken. Whether that's a curry or not, I don't know. Here we go. All right. Now this one is Boop. I pushed the wrong button. Although it is a classic game. Don't uh, see me... your screen, Jan. I haven't shared it yet because God is still loading. There it goes. Oh, fair Ooh. enough. All right. I only started working on this today, but welcome to Two Geeky Go Out. They're not animated yet. There's no goals yet. There's no score yet. But I wanted to put in a, a basic 3D local multiplayer game that shows off some Oof. of these environment settings. So here we have. Um, the new SD, the, the new rendering system, SDFG, SFG. Just say it as a um, word. The, the physics death. system, the lighting system. <laughs> um, the fact that kinematic bodies can now interact properly with rigid bodies if you set them up right. And this was not immediately obvious. It took me about an hour to figure out earlier. And then making sure that these things face the way you want to go. I will probably tween them so they're not quite so... Googly eyes! I love that suggestion. Googly eyes. Definitely googly eyes. Um, I will also animate the wings and the tail when they move. I, I kind of want to bring in all the characters. I don't know if Boris the Bat will work or if Bob the Skull. <gasps> the ball should be Bob the Skull. Oh, poor Bob. He loves it. Should we put a trail on him? No. Um... But I want to bring in uh, Friend Panda. I want to bring in um, Legit Penguin, maybe Space Duck. I want to bring in Avery Bunny and Any Bunny. That's right. Those are things that are going to happen. Um, do we have any other characters yet? I've lost count. Mm. Um, <laughs> if you guys think of a good character, we might put it in. I'm not promising that. Um, one thing I do want to mention, Mikey. Hello. Are we going to run this on Kickstarter? No. 
No, we are not. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And we're back. So one, uh, j just segueing from Godo for everyone for a moment, uh, but it is uh, applying to Godo for everyone, is subtitles. Now, you've uh, people mm. have mentioned Udemy and asked about Udemy. And Udemy do auto-generated subtitles, which have gotten us in a bit of a pickle in the past because they don't seem to have a profanity filter or a sensibility filter on their auto subtitles. So whilst Udemy do do subtitles, they don't do them very well. However, we've started going through um, uh, and manually captioning or adding subtitles to courses in English. So what you will find is that at the moment, Erin's brand new course on geometry nodes is the only one currently that has subtitles on it. However, that will branch out, certainly with all the new courses getting the uh, treatment first, and then the back catalogue, anything that's still on sale, obviously things will go out of date. Is that the right? No. Or become... Become obsolete. Become obsolete, basically. no one, At some point, no one's going to buy a, a Godo 3 point, um, five course or a Blender 2.7 <laughs> um, course, for instance. Deirdre is asking, you got stick for auto-generated subtitles with little or no control over. Yes, uh, specifically um, on one of my introductions for discovering Godot. <laughs> it's better than my one. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what I said, but it was something along the lines of, hello, you wonderful Godot people. In this video, we're going to yada, yada, yada. And it said, hello, you wonderful God. In this video, we'll jihad. <laughs> I'm like, nope. Nope, just nope. <laughs> I. The thing is, we couldn't turn those off, so we would only get reports of <laughs> yeah. of that w when they came back. I had one when I was um, both doing a, a chess piece, a pawn that you would use in chess, mm -hmm. and also um, when you're doing Unreal, uh, a pawn is a type of actor that you can use. And so, obviously, that was spelt incorrectly, not P-A-W-N right. like it should have been, because I... I think it was an, an Americanized um, dictation, mm. so I was supposed to say pan. Or stuff like that. To me, that sounds more like a pan, but there we go. Um, yes. Yes, <laughs> Durgan has pointed out it is kind of a journey. Yes, I mean, technically, by the most literal translation of jihad, it is a journey and we are striving, which is what the word actually means. I am not a Muslim, but, you know, it doesn't mean holy war. Um, but... I don't know that it's worth me arguing that point repeatedly. <laughs> um, we also occasionally get um, requests for subtitles in other languages. This is very expensive. And I don't just mean expensive in terms of money. I mean, it's incredibly labor intensive. We want to do it um, both in English and in other languages, yes. but we are still a small company. And frankly, we don't have the resources yet. Yes. So um, one of my children is actually doing the subtitles and earning some pocket money from doing that. And he's he's very engaged with it at the moment and is loving going through it. And he's obviously, he's he's quite technical himself, so he can actually understand. That's that's one of the other things with un, uh, actually going through a anything that's got any technicality to it. The mm. subtitles actually have to match what's going on on the screen. They can't be verbatim what you're saying. Otherwise, it doesn't have the same meaning. And the person doing the subtitle has to know what the jargon means, which yeah. is how you avoid the pawn pawn problem, right? Uh, if you have a homonym, which is two words that sound the same but don't have the same meaning, um, you need the person to know which one it is. Yeah. Um, I, but yeah, we want to talk a little bit about the Kickstarter. We're not doing a Kickstarter for this. This is uh, a very big course. It's not the biggest course we've done without a Kickstarter. There'll be Blender. Um, we don't really want to be in the business of every course we do gets its own Kickstarter. And we're still waiting on Godot to be stable enough to deliver the Godot content yeah. from your action RPG. And it just felt really cheap to run another Kickstarter and say, give us your money. We haven't even started the last one yet. You know, it. we, we don't want to. Oh, I'm chuckling. I'm said, chuckling away. We at don't want to do you moment. like that. Yes. Um, hiring students for ex for exposure. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> it's 
we, we have had people volunteer to do subtitles before and i've always been very reluctant because i don't think they understand the sheer amount of work they've just volunteered for because subtitling a 10 minute video is not 10 minutes work no in fact it probably takes longer to manually subtitle a video than it does to edit it because uh, you have to match up timestamps and check well, one of the one of the biggest stuff. things going through the process of the uh, you mean interns love it so one of the biggest one of the biggest things when you're actually subtitling is the fact that if a video edit is done your subtitles don't work anymore yep because the video is at a different length and all it takes is is one edit like that, and suddenly you've got okay, okay. You don't redo the whole lot of subtitles, but you need to redo it either way. The Mad Tinker says you guys wouldn't be the first to ask for more before finishing your first project. Winky face. I'm sorry, I can't hear. You. I'm going through a tunnel. Sorry. Yep. And <laughs> yep. Breaking up. I should. I, if I just turn noise cancellation on, it does the job <laughs> for me, doesn't it? When it comes to that. So yeah. Whenever um, we do a Kickstarter next, uh, it'll always be for something that requires uh, added risk. That's essentially it. We'd, we want to do something, and we want to do something that, if we go out on our own and do it, it's going to consume a vast amount of resources, and we won't necessarily know whether something is going to be uh, like really exciting for people or not. And one of the best ways of doing that is through a Kickstarter, because if you yep. release a Kickstarter and it, it doesn't do particularly well, Mag Racer would be a great example. It did do well by our own metrics, but it didn't, it didn't succeed its it, goal, it didn't which do... means there wasn't enough right. excitement. There wasn't enough um, and also, excitement around the we project. We couldn't itself. justify taking the time away from other projects it would take yeah. to create something that size. Um, Durgan says, hello, Star Citizen. Durgan has actually tried to get me into Star Citizen a few times, and I just won't. <laughs> like, release the game and I'll look at it. But <laughs> but only if you buy a ship for $17,000. Roderick, I watched the subtitles for Movie Short for my parents. Uh, no good subs are available online. It took barely a whole day for four minutes of it. Yeah, welcome to subtitling. It, it is impressively... And nice. then when you start getting other languages, like translating between languages is not easy. Like even between English and French. What do you mean speak, we just stick it in not Google literal. Translate and press translate and upload it? I mean, Google Translate is getting better, but it doesn't have a theory of mind. So <laughs> Very true. It, it Very can't true. deal with context. Um, the no. famous auto-translated engineering manuals that translated the English hydraulic ram into water sheep in Chinese. <laughs> were... <laughs> Bit different. It'll be fine. Yeah. Fine. Fine. It's on fire. Fine. Um, but yeah, so got it for everyone. I am very excited about it. We don't currently have a uh, time for, for it. Um, we, we're we not yet taking orders for it because it's still at the stage where so much is changing. We don't really want you guys paying for something we haven't committed to. Uh, but we're getting pretty close to it, and we are now at the stage where it's like, you know what, let's tell them. Let's tell them what the name is. Let's show them the logo. Um, we spent so long just playing with images for that horse image. <laughs> it was like the best part of an hour just going through tweaking, tweaking this uh, hue, yeah. that setting. I, I, at one point, I was like, oh, this will look much better with a darker background. Put the darker background on. Like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> nope. No, it doesn't. Nope. Um, so, yeah, we're going for something accessible. We're going for something cartoony. I want something that can be understood by, what's a good age? Maybe Eight. nine-year-olds, eight-year-olds, eight, nine, like up to retirees. Like, it, it should be something that the pedagogy is strong enough that it can work across the spectrum. Um, it's not going to be everyone's thing, and that's great. Um, there are plenty of people making all kinds of different tutorials. Yeah. Um, there are it's not going to be the only resource you will ever need because different people have different styles different people have different ideas and different people have different solutions but um i i think it's really exciting i like the games we have so far they're very simple but they're fun to play and they're great to expand on like yeah. coming up with um power-ups for spooky bricks was just fun you coming i believe you had too it. much fun with <laughs> We might actually have to do a very simple, quick introduction to Libra Sprite. Um, because it's just fun to make those characters. 
So Libra Sprite, if I remember correctly, is the free version of a Sprite, isn't it? Right. It's the so from what I understand, and I'm not an expert here, a Sprite used to be free. Yep. And then they they paid it, and Libra Sprite is the fork before they did that. Gotcha. So it's very similar in in in, in some aspects, but also quite a bit different in others. Okay. Hello, Miranda Mon. And da, 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 da. yeah, I mean, we actually do get a lot of requests for Brazilian Portuguese or Portuguese at Spanish. Um, we don't get many requests for Chinese, which is interesting, but people in China tend to get very good English tuition as well. I, I mean, it's certainly something that uh, we definitely want to do in the future, but we would want so, uh, we would actually want to um, compensate someone for doing a translation yeah. into another language. Um, for those of you who don't know, and I'm going to go into a little bit of um, jargon here. Um, my, my training is in education, specifically theater education. Um, I'm a self-taught coder, uh, just as Mikey is, I believe. So there are instructors out there that I would say are stronger coders than me. But I think our pedagogy, our teaching philosophy is very solid. Um, and specifically, we work on what is called a learner-centric model. Um, which means it's all about making it as accessible as possible, uh, getting rid of that divide between expert teacher who's at the altar of knowledge, everyone else just be quiet and listen, which is why we do these kinds of very chatty informal live streams. It's why we crack jokes during the video. Like all of this is there for a reason, Yeah, right? It's there to make this open and accepting. Uh, uh, one... When can we view the first release of the RPG 3D course for God 04? Um, that is a good question. We were actually talking about that. Um, the first release, I don't know yet, because that depends on when the beta is, more, is stable enough. Yes, and obviously if you are an early access backer or a lifetime member, you will be getting access before everybody else. As, oh. as your reward for backing at those levels and a, a chance to obviously steer the course and give us a lot of feedback as we're going. Um, but in terms the... of that, it's, it's all about stability at the moment. Uh, yep. Jan, this morning, we were we were playing around in God 04 and it crashed. We were just chatting for 45 minutes, I think it was, and there were three crashes in there. And it needs to be of a stability that when we're teaching it, there's not a crash. And the same for you guys. It, it's I'll really frustrating. Otherwise. I started recording the 3.1 version of Discovering Godot when 3.1 was still in beta. And then... I shouldn't laugh, but yeah. The second to last beta, the penultimate beta, they changed the UI and I had to re-record everything because the layout didn't work anymore. <laughs> it's like, oh! Um, so, uh, a friend that works for professional localization. Yes? Uh, yeah, that'd be great, but we that'd can't pay them at the moment. <laughs> That'll be further further down the line. Right. No, it's something we'd love to do. But uh, do you teach us modeling those assets like the character? The, the short answer is yes. That is part of the action RPG uh, suite of courses. So there, there's going to be... A... about the first release of the non goto part, part yes. of that course, they're out. Yes. We've already got a music course out and a using geometry nodes to create randomized weapons, which was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. one, and and once um, once Godo the is stable, art as well. Yes, we've also got the concept art course out as well. So that there's already uh, work out there for the Godo action RPG. And now that uh, beta has come out, I've been playing a lot with importing assets. And once we've nailed that uh, work pipe pipeline, that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, once we've nailed that pipeline, we're going to be able to teach that in the rest of the Blender courses when we're creating the uh, dungeon assets, when we're creating X, Y, and Z, whatever it happens to be for the course itself, including Aria, our main character. Um. Shuro says, are you waiting for God 04 to exit beta to start early access? <sighs> I'd like to get it started as soon as possible. Yeah. Once it's more stable, uh, and like the crashes at the moment are not the same kind of crashes we had in alpha, so it's already better. Mm. I want to start recording. There is a decent chance that I will have to start recording from scratch if they change the UI or something major, massive changes. We are in a, f a, a, a feature lock right now, in feature freeze. Yeah. Um, so they're not going to add more features. But they may change the UI 
still because that's not and a feature change. That's a lot to say. of code has changed in God of War. Like the actual function yeah. calls have changed. Uh, the methods. Um, for example, for today in uh, Spooky Bricks, I gave I got a copy to Mikey. I went and checked it, and it didn't run. And the reason it didn't run is in tile map world to map is now local to map. Easy change, but you got to go through and redo it again. Yeah. In a video, that's not really the kind of thing you can patch over, right? You you have to redo no, that because your code is going to be persistent in every lecture after that. Right, and, and if I sit that, if you sat through a, a ten minute video when I've gone world to map, world to map, world to map, and then the next video is like, "Hi guys, they just released a patch." I'm not going to re-record this video. Instead, just go back and change it to local to map. Bye. Yeah, you're going to be really happy with me. <laughs> so it's it's a, it's always a choice we have to come out, um, come out from various different angles depending on what has changed so one of the thing the big things that have changed uh when blender 2.8 came out and then there was a, there was a change i think it was between 2.8 and 2.81 they changed remove doubles which is where you have two vertices and uh -huh. they're overlapping and you can merge them into one and they changed it to merge by distance and that obviously threw a load of people out because it's it's something that if you're joining geometry together and optimizing, it's something that you're going to do time and time again. And I've re and I've repeated it lots of times through. And even with a patch saying this is now called merge by distance, it's what you need to look for. It can cause um, something like that anyway. It can cause a huge spike in support questions, all asking because even though you've you've said, oh, this is now called merge by distance, nope. In the next video, you say remove doubles, so someone's going to ask, where's remove Especially doubles? Especially when you're dealing with beginner content. Yes, because exactly. It's the same reason that I don't use different color schemes in Godot. I'd love to, but I want my screen to look like the vanilla layout. So if anyone hasn't changed anything, they're not comfortable exploring the menus and finding everything, they'll see what I see. I... I at the beginning of all my Blender stuff, and I'm, I apologize now for because it's going to be the same in every Blender course, I always have at least one lecture that is why mine looks different to yours, including the subtitles, because I have had people asking me, and it's just, it's part of the course that you, you go through and you will have people asking, oh, what? cool what's this theme that you have or why do you get why have you got these uh key presses appearing how do i get that well if they're explained at the beginning of the course it's then answered even though it can feel a bit repetitive and a bit redundant because ultimately it's to help the learner not for my aid because i know what buttons i pressed vertex rage says i actually think many people don't even try to google stuff before asking for help yes but i'll point out Google is a great resource if you know how to phrase the question. It's very true. And if you're brand new to something like coding or Blender, it can be really challenging to understand why it's not working and phrase the question in a way that Google will understand it. So, yeah. yes, but that's not always their fault. And I, I, I will stick my head out here and actually say that one of the best things that I've always, uh, I've, I've told everybody to do that, you know, how to ask good questions can come across quite uh, condescending to some people. Oh, I, of course I know how to answer. But letting us know as instructors, uh, not just us, but any instructor or teacher, letting them know what you've tried, what has, what has worked slightly, what has not worked, etc., and then you don't end up with this back and forth that basically says, I'm stuck. What are you stuck with? This. Well, what about that? And you end up with this backwards and forwards. And it just delays getting to some solution for a student, which is frustrating for not only the student, but us as well. So, you know, I'm having I mean, a problem with my variable. Oh, a course on how to use spelling. Google, usually. Um, we have had <laughs> courses on how to ask questions. Or not course, but a, a lecture. <laughs> like, what, if you need help, how do yeah. you do it? Yeah. Um, and one of the first things we say is go to the Discord because it's one of the downsides to online education, right? We have many, many, many students across different platforms. We can't physically give them personal one-to-one -one tuition when they need it. It's something you could do better in a classroom. And even there, your, your time is going to be split between yeah. 10, 15, 30, 50 people. Um, but it, it, in a video setting, you, you just can't, yeah. like if you've got 3000 students on a course and they're all got individual problems, you really need a community where people can help each other and then can escalate to you if it needs changing, which is what we try and encourage.
Static typing? Will end the course of such on static typing. Yes, absolutely they will, because it's a really good, well, first, knowing what it is and when to use it. Second, the mm -hmm. auto-completion you get from it. And third, in Godot 4, there's a speed boost from using static typing. Yes. So, yes, we will talk about that. Yeah, I... I, th I think that's true. A lecture on how to ask questions is different, and inverted. I mean, often very uh, one of the recurring things you get, um, especially in coding, is people say it doesn't work, and they'll say, "You know, my ball doesn't bounce." It's like, could you post your code? It just they, they just don't know, or they do don't know, they don't know, um, for instance, how to format code, so it comes through without right. the correct spacing, um, and none of that is formatting. necessarily them being lazy or not wanting to it's mm. they don't have that expertise they don't know that there are many many different ways something might not work so if i see your code i can go through it and often it, it's a missing semicolon or you spout color with Thankfully, an o, not in god they're not an we don't o use U. semicolons <laughs> or indentation that's the indentation yeah. absolutely um or you've got one too many parentheses at some point that's caught me it caught me out today when i was uh, coding with python I was like, why is this Godot not is working? Pretty good about not running if something's wrong. Mm -hmm. I was using a programming language the other week where if you did a conditional, if you if you were doing a for or an if, Take care. an if statement. Enjoy. Uh, if you're doing an if statement, you could do if x equals whatever. And it would pass, and it would run, and it would fail silently. Oh, yeah. Because it wouldn't flag, you mean double equals. <laughs> oh, I, I'm very you deliberate. watch me teach No, I do a lot of typos. And, yeah. <laughs> Oh, one of the things that I've I've gotten um, in the habit of is when I say equals, I mean double, obviously. And when I say assign when you're assigning a value i specifically say assign rather than using the you know the name of the character that you're using because then it's very clear and it certainly helps me stay very clear as to what i'm actually doing am i assigning a value to a variable or am i actually um, equivalency if i'm actually making something equal to something else uh yeah no i think you're right we haven't figured out how to make online education work properly. And I mean, when I was doing my teacher training, well, actually I'd already qualified when I was teaching and we did a, a, a development course on online education. One of the problems they flagged is online education can't be, is, you can't just take a classroom class and put it online. And we know that students, um, students thrive when they believe that the teacher has their back cares about their progress um when they don't feel alone when they they are actively interacting with other students and online education is very bad at all of these things um and one of the the go-to's in true. universities at least in the states was um hand in your paper and then on monday comment on at least two other people's paper and they're, they're trying to simulate the, the interaction if you're a student, you just do the bare minimum. This was really interesting. I like the bit when you said potato. Right? It's not <laughs> genuine interaction. Uh, no. I'm trying to solve that problem is an ongoing battle. I mean, one of the great things about online learning is it's enabled us as teachers to reach so many people. I've I've certainly, and I know Jan probably has as well. We've reached more people and helped them learn something than a typical teacher would have done in their entire career that's how potent online learning is and it's phenomenal that we can have that amount of reach and help that many people on their on their game dev journey it um it's also interesting i mean both mikey and i i think it's fair to say have a, a degree of imposter syndrome so you know you're really seeing a new course you're always nervous and um one of the interesting things about teaching online is you always remember the negative feedback yeah, I mean, poor Michael. Someone wrote a snide comment, um, which on like every course he's ever released. Like, why are you buying them all? Um, and he just like posted all these things at me, and I'm like, oh yeah, 
And it's interesting because you could have like 200 other people saying, I really love this course, but you remember that one. <laughs> the, the best the best one for me is is you, you, you will have two reviews next to one another or two comments next to one another. Literally one of them says, or, or let's do all three. One of them will say, this is brilliantly paced, loved it, kept me engaged throughout. Then someone says, you talk too slow, one star. And then th then there'll be someone else saying, you talk too quick. And I'm like, yeah. Which one I don't am understand I? your accent. I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's fine. It, it's um, so that's challenging. It, when parents start telling their children, kids, just Google it, it'll be finally be solved. Except Google is not a great arbiter of what is what is not true. Yes. You can yeah. get a lot of bad information and a bad coding solutions that way. So there's going to be a huge, great big uh, problem with the Godot um, community when it comes to searching for new stuff. Because you, you're going to type in Godot for how to do something. And then you're going to get all the stuff for Godot 3 coming up. And Yep. Yeah. And you can try and parse it as best you can. You can put, oh, I've got to put minus and put Godo 3 in there. But then every, people might have just said, in Godo, you need to do this and not included the version number. So it can be incredibly challenging to find information when things are changing. There was a huge, great big uh, change when uh, Python 2.7 and Python 3 were both active at the same time. Now, 2.7 has since been... Uh, I think deprecated is the right word. It, it's no longer sort of it is actively used in a lot of code bases, but it's no longer the thing. And we're now on Python three point ten. But even with that, Python three point ten and three point eight, there's been some huge differences between well, yeah. the languages. And that now there are better ways of doing things. So you could learn a way of doing something that is no longer the the way to do something. Something that I still do to this day is uh, with Python is I import the OS module in order to um, interact with your uh, with the operating system. It turns out that that is uh, an older way of doing something, and you need to do exceptions for Linux and Mac. You need to actually code in um, specific things. Um, and, of course, I don't use those platforms, so occasionally I get feedback saying, oh, this doesn't work on Linux, why? And it's because the OS module doesn't work like that. However, there is a new way of doing it that I keep forgetting the name of. So I go, well, I know how to use OS. So I just go back to it because it worked. Um, we have gone past the hour. So I think we should start wrapping up because I haven't had dinner yet. Um, and so you guys should get your any questions, concerns, comments, interpretive dances and thoughts ready. And while you're doing that, Mikey, which of the games would you like to play for a closeout? I've I've won all the games I think except Minesweeper. So I'm going to play Minesweeper. Sorry, you're going to play what? Um, Sweepy Took, Tooky Sweep. Pie Sweeper. Pie Sweeper. I don't really want to get sued by Microsoft. Um, shall I play Invader Ducks instead? <laughs> I mean, you didn't win Invader Ducks. Oh no, I didn't. I'm going to play Invader Ducks. It's a bit more um, yeah. um Invader Ducks. Space Invader Ducks. Invader Ducks. No. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not going to change. <laughs> so, uh, Mikey gets that ready. If you guys have any questions, comments, ideas, um, oh, that's that's the wrong stories button. about how great right we button. are, go for it. There we go. Do, 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 do. Why am I seeing it? A... Oh, okay. Just waiting for it to load up. You also don't seem to be sharing. Oh, I might have turned off um, the sharing with you at the moment. Oh, they. Quack, quack. I love it. <laughs> Should we put a quack, 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 Damn, I got the timing wrong because of that. You should see my face right now. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, I was watching him. No, no. <laughs> did Michael make the music? Michael did not make the music. Michael was busy, so I went to uh, open game. I would like Michael to make music, but... Oh. We could release this game. 
Uh, we need a couple more levels for it. Yeah. And maybe a, a, a high school table that actually holds. Uh, one thing I would like to do is maybe palette swap some of the ducks so we can get different colors in there. That's a nice one. Some foul weather. Um, <laughs> yeah, he got egg on his face. Uh, yes, please so, do yes. join in with the horrible, horrible. Puns. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's our little intro to God of War Everyone, which is our upcoming thing. Um, once we are closer to being finalized, uh, we will start taking early access orders. Uh, lifetime members will get it first because that's one of the things they pay for. Yeah. And once they've gone through and checked some of the bugs and maybe re record stuff because it happens, sleepy. I'm Although, really looking forward I, to it. I'm looking forward to uh, For those of you who've been paying attention, you'll know that I've been fatigued all the time. I'm now king of naps. Um, and it's got to the point where it's like, okay, I have to see a doctor. So I got my blood test today, and uh, in a few days, I'll, I'll figure out what's wrong with me, hopefully. Turns out Jan was human after all. That's what I'm betting on. <laughs> I did ask Mikey, can we get illegal substances to help me stay awake? I was on, like, hmm. as business expenses? <laughs> and Mikey's actual response was, I don't know. Try. I'd love to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, there's a cat. It it it, it might be. Mm. Anyway, I was going to say something that's not safe for work, which we we endeavour to make sure our channel remains. But anyway, thank you everybody for joining us this evening. I'm really excited for Godo for everyone, and we'll Bye. keep you up to date. If you're not on our Discord, do come over and join it, and you'll see more Link smaller updates. Video. Is it in the doobly doo? I don't know. I'm on three to four pots of coffee a day. Like, <laughs> I'm going to put the link uh, in here for tattoos. people who need it. So, can it be the aims? Yeah. Be, 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 be. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye, Mikey. I'm doing the bye thing. Bye. I typed Mikey. it in wrong. Hold on. Hold on. I'm doing the bye. It's in the description. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. You ruined my buy. There we go. Ah. Uh, bye. <laughs> ah!